this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the urinary system. The urinary system is a very in-depth uh, subject. What we're going to do in this video is just basically go over the anatomical structures and, as well as some physiology uh, of the urinary system. Urinary system. Like when you have your car and, and you have oil in your car and um, after a while, that oil gets dirty, okay? Uh, and if you don't change that oil, it uh, can eventually cause problems to your car. Same thing is um, happening to the urinary system. If you don't clean the blood, the blood will be stagnant, and it can cause a lot of problems to the urinary system, um, and it can cause a lot of problems to your body, actually. Uh, if your urinary system is, is not working properly. You may urinate a bunch of salts, uh, ions, um, a bunch of water. Uh, you may keep a lot of waste, nitrogenous waste in your body. Uh, and at that point, uh, if you do have kidney problems, then uh, you most likely will have to get dialysis. Dialysis. Actually, you're gonna have some tubes coming out of your bloodstream that will connect to these uh, machines uh, that will filter the blood out and you'd have to do that several times a week and it's such an inconvenience than just going to the bathroom and urinating and uh, putting your pants back on, washing your hands and going about your business. Uh, so, gotta love the urinary system. Urinary system functions. The urinary system has the major functions of excretion, which is the removal of metabolic waste products from the body fluids, and elimination, the discharge of these wastes out of the body. The urinary system also has a third major function, homeostatic regulation of the volume and solid concentration of blood. Essential to such homeostatic regulations are the following. Regulating blood volume and blood pressure. By adjusting the volume of water lost in urine, secreting erythropoietin and releasing renin, regulating plasma concentration of sodium, potassium, chloride and other ions by influencing the quantities in urine. The kidneys also control the calcium ion level through the synthesis of calcitriol, helping in stabilizing blood pH by controlling the concentrations of hydrogen and bicarbonate ions in urine, conserving valuable nutrients by preventing their loss in urine while removing metabolic waste, especially the nitrogenous waste, urea and uric acid, assisting the liver in detoxifying poisons and, during starvation, the deamination of amino acids for their metabolic use by other tissues. These activities are carefully regulated to keep the composition of blood within acceptable limits. A disruption of any one of them has immediate consequences and can be fatal. Okay, so let's go ahead and start getting on the models. There's a bunch of models here that I will be showing you. Anatomical models. The first model that I will show you is this one. Okay. Now this model here is a posterior view of the male. You can see in the bottom the prostate seminal vesicles, the uh, ampulla vas deferens. So this is the posterior view of the male. Organs of the urinary system, kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, urethra. Here you see the kidneys and the ureters. Here the ureter is supposed to be connected to here, but it broke, but it's supposed to go here. Um, the ureters, the urinary bladder, and then coming out of the urinary bladder, we have here the, here he goes, the urethra. Okay, so we have the urinary tract. Uh, urinary tract. Ureters, urinary bladder, urethra. The urinary tract consists of a pair of tubes called ureters, a urinary bladder, and then the urethra, which we saw over here. Okay. Let's go to the front here of this model. So notice that the left kidney is more to the back and higher than the right kidney. The reason being is because you have the liver on the right side that sits up here. Kidney sits up here. 
so that I mean the liver sits up here so that makes this kidney go down a little further also another interesting feature about the kidneys is that they lie retroperitoneal so the kidneys sit in between the muscles of the posterior body wall and the parietal peritoneal that's why they're retroperitoneal to remember all the organs located entirely or partially retroperitoneally, use the mnemonic SAD pucker for suprarenal or adrenal glands, aorta and inferior vena cava, duodenum, pancreas, ureters, colon, kidneys, esophagus, and rectum. This model here is three major parts of the, the urinary system. Here on the uh, right, we have our entire our kidney. Here we can see a renal lobe, which is made up of the cortex and the medulla. And then here we have the renal corpuscle. Okay. So let's go ahead and start doing some anatomy here. All right. So this is our kidney. We have our outer layer of the kidney, which is the uh, fibrous capsule. Okay. Here we have our cortex okay. and inside here we have the medulla. Okay. Now I have another model here that just shows this. Let me go ahead and show you that one. Okay, so here we have the fibrous capsule, cortex, the medulla, and these are called the renal pyramids, which make up, which are part of the medulla. Okay. Okay. This is the renal columns, which sit in between the renal pyramids. Okay. The pyramids will dump their uh, urine into the minor calyx. Okay. And calyxes mean like chalice or goblets. It's like a cup and that cup will pick up the urine. So four to five minor calyx will empty into uh, two to three major calyx. Then the two to three major calyx will dump into a renal pelvis and the renal pelvis will dump into the ureter. The space in between the calyx is called the renal sinus. The opening immediately to the kidney is called a hilus. So we went over the kidney. Here we have a renal lobe. Now these structures here are called nephrons. Nephrons are made up of renal corpuscles and these convoluted tubules. Okay. Here's the cortex, there's a medulla, and this is a collecting duct. Okay, we'll go more into this model pretty soon. Here we can see a renal corpuscle here, which is made up basically of this uh, glomerulus. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you another model that's by itself with this. So this is the renal corpuscle. The renal corpuscle is made up of the glomerulus, which is a knot of capillaries. I think the glomerulus has said here that it's 50 intertwined capillaries. Okay. So the renal corpuscle is going to be made up of the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. And uh, here you see some other structures. You see these little white things right there. Those are called podocytes. And the podocytes are going to have the little legs uh, uh, that are called pedicels. Okay? So this covering here, the glomerulus, is called the visceral epithelium. Okay, visceral epithelium. And the lining of the Bowman's capsule is called the parietal epithelium. Okay, so let's look at how blood gets into the kidney. Blood supply of the kidneys. The kidneys receive 20 to 25% of the total cardiac output. In healthy individuals, about 1200 milliliters of blood flow through the kidneys each minute, a phenomenal amount of blood for organs with a combined weight of less than 300 grams. I will be using this flow chart to trace blood through the kidneys. So the renal artery is going to come into the kidney like this. From the renal arteries to the segmental arteries. From the segmental arteries, the blood will go to right here, the interlobar uh, artery. 
the blood of the interlobar artery will take blood, uh, the blood of the interlobar artery will go to the arcuate artery. Arcuate because it forms like an arc between the cortex and the medulla. From the arcuate artery, the blood will go now to the interlobular uh, artery or the cortical radiate artery. So the cortical radiate artery to the afferent arterial to the glomerulus. Now here the blood will be filtered out. Then we have the efferent arterial. Okay. And the blood is going to go from the efferent arterial to the paratubular capillaries. Okay. Now from there the blood is going to go from artery to vein. Because from the paratubular capillary you're going to go to now these little blue veins. Uh, those are called venules. So from the venules, it'll go to the uh, interlobular uh, vein or cortical radial vein to the arcuate vein. So here you see that the blood continues here via the arcuate vein, arcuate vein to the interlobar vein, the interlobar vein to the renal vein. Then here from the renal vein, the blood renal vein, the blood will go to the inferior vein and cable, and then it'll go up to the heart. Paratubular capillary versus basa recta. You see the, um, the interlobar artery, the arcuate artery, the interlobular artery to the afferent arterial, to the glomerulus, afferent arterial. This is paratubular capillaries. Now, if there's two types of nephrons. There's cortical and juxtamedullary. I never even mentioned this earlier in the video, but cortical uh, nephrons are about 80, 80, 85% of all the nephrons. There's a million nephrons in each kidney. The nephron is made up of the renal corpuscle and the convoluted tubules, and there's a million of these nephrons. Now, there's two types, cortical and juxtamedullary. Cortical, their nephrons don't go too deep into the medulla. I mean, their loops don't go too deep into the medulla, but the juxtamedullary nephrons go further down into the medulla. Okay, so if this is a cortical nephron, then this is all paratubular capillary. But if it's a juxtamedullary, juxtamedullary nephron, then it will be paratubular capillaries and in vasorecta recta in this bottom half. Then here we have the venules, interlobular vein, arcuate vein to the interlobar vein in the heart. Juxtaglomerular apparatus or JGA? Okay, so this model here gets a little bit more into detail of the um, uh, juxtaglomerular apparatus. You can see the macula densa cells of the distal convoluted tubule of uh, the DCT. Macula densa. Macula densa are a group of tall, closely packed epithelial cells in the distal tubular epithelium. They function as either chemoreceptors or baroreceptors. Chemoreceptors monitor the chemical content, while baroreceptors monitor the blood pressure. The JG cells will monitor the blood. Juxtaglomerular cells or JG cells. The juxtaglomerular cells are modified smooth muscle cells in the wall of the afferent arterial that secrete the hormone renin. These cells function as baroreceptors that monitor blood pressure in the afferent arterial. Okay, so together, the afferent arterial along with the DCT, the JG cells of the afferent arterial and the macula densa cells, which are cells that are within the uh, DCT, they form the juxtaglomerular juxta apparatus, or JGA, or JGC, juxtaglomerular complex. Renal corpuscle. Filtration of blood plasma occurs at the renal corpuscle. Infiltration, blood pressure forces water and solutes across the walls of the glomerular epithelium and into the capsular space. Only solids small enough to pass the filtration membrane will be carried by water into the capsular space. Okay, so blood is going to come in here via the afferent arterial to the glomerulus. The filtrate is going to happen here at the glomerulus, and the blood will continue out the efferent arterial. 
Okay, so now let's go start getting into the convoluted tubule system, or, or the tubular system. Renal tubule. The renal tubule is about 50 millimeters or 1.97 inches in length. There are two convoluted tubules, the proximal convoluted tubule, or the PCT, and the distal convoluted tubule, or DCT. In between the PCT and DCT is a nephron loop called the loop of Henle. The convoluted segments lie in the cortex of the kidney and the loop of Henle dips, at least in part, into the medulla. As the filtrate from the glomerulus flows into the renal tube, it is now called tubular fluid and gradually changes in composition. This is because of reabsorption and secretion. When a substance is reabsorbed or reclaimed, it eventually enters the blood. When a substance is secreted, it enters the tubular fluid from the blood. The changes that take place in the tubular fluid and the characteristics of the urine are due to activities that occur in each segment of the nephron. Um, the first tube that the filtrate will lead into is the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal convoluted tubule or PCT. The PCT is lined by cuboidal cells with microvilli. The PCT is responsible for reabsorption of ions, organic molecules, vitamins, and water. It is also secretion of drugs, toxins, and acids. Okay, so the proximal convoluted tubule is going to have a cuboidal epithelium with uh, microvilli, which help in reabsorption. Like 60 to 70 percent of water, sodium, chloride ions, and 99 to 100 percent of organic substrates. And the PCT in this model will be in orange. Okay. See the PCT, the proximal convoluted tubule, is all this in orange. And from the proximal convoluted tubule, you're going to go down the descended loop of Henle. Nephron loop, or the loop of Henle. I will be alternating between these two terms. There are three parts to the nephron loop, or the loop of Henle. The first part is the descending thin limb, or DTL. There's also a thick limb, but it's not as noticeable as the thin limb. Then there is the ascending thin limb, or ATL. And finally, the thick ascending limb, or the TAL. The descending loop of Henle has a thick and, uh, and a thin limb. Descending thin limb, or DTL. The DTL contains simple squamous cells and is responsible for reabsorption of water from the tubular fluid. The descending loop of Henle is going to uh, be permeable to water and permeable to solutes. Then we have the ascending loop of Henle. Ascending thin limb, or ATL. Thick ascending limb, or TAL. ATL contains squamous cells. TAL has low cuboidal cells. The ascending limb is responsible for ion reabsorption and concentration gradient. And the ascending loop of Henle is going to be permeable to solutes and impermeable to water. Then the blood is going to go here to the DCT. Now the distal convoluted tubule or DCT. The DCT has cuboidal cells with low microvilli. The DCT reabsorbs sodium and calcium ions and secretes acids, ammonia, drugs, and toxins. Now the DCT starts here at the afferent arterial because together they go going to form the juxtaglomerular apparatus. From the uh, DCT, the blood will go here to the collecting tubule, to the collecting duct, it's now here we can uh, safely say this is urine. Collecting duct. Two main types of cells are found in the collecting duct. Intercalated cells and principal cells. Intercalated cells are cuboidal cells with microvilli. There are two types of intercalated cells, but suffice it to say, intercalated cells regulate the acid-base balance in the blood. Principal cells are cuboidal cells they do lack microvilli, 
and reabsorb water as well as sodium and secrete potassium ions. The collecting system transports tubular fluid from the nephrons to the renal pelvis. Along the way, the collecting duct adjusts the fluid's composition and determines the final osmotic concentration and volume of urine, which is the final product. Okay, so here you see the collecting duct, papillary duct. It's going to go to the minor calyxes, to the major calyxes, to the renal pelvis, and then to the ureter. So from the ureters to the urinary bladder, then out the urethra. Here is the urethra. Okay. All right, the urethra does have here an internal urethral sphincter and an external urethra, internal urethral sphincter and external urethral sphincter. The internal urethral sphincter is for involuntary control and the external urethral sphincter is for voluntary control. Once the involuntary can't control, you're going to have to go to the bathroom no matter what. Now within the urinary bladder, you do have a trigone here, which are the two ureter entrances and the urethra exit. Urinary bladder does have this, uh, these stretch receptors um, that send a signal to the brain that says, hey, you're too full. Uh, that's called the micturation reflex. So when the urinary bladder is too full, then the internal urethral sphincters will relax as well as the external urethral sphincters and that allow the urine to be pushed out by the muscular urinary bladder through the urethra and then out into the environment. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the urinary system. Pretty in-depth uh, 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 urinary system that I really partially went in-depth, not too much, but, uh, uh, um, but at least you get the gist of what the structures are and what the function of the urinary system is. Well, that's all I have for the urinary system. Hope you liked the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Um, and I will see you on the next video, remaining uh, videos, uh, the reproductive system of the male and the female. And um, I'll see you in, that, in those videos. Take care, good luck, and bye.